Peter Parker Goes Proto as we have a look at the Marvel Spider-Man Proto Suit Costume Spider-Man. Peter ventures forth as Spider-Man in his functional, if not entirely fashionable, proto suit. As we normally do, let's figure out how tall Peter Parker is in his proto suit. That's a mouthful. And we're going to put it right to the top of his head. There we go. Switching it to the correct reading, there we go. 5.5 inches is the height for Spider Man. Switching that over to centimeters, you're looking at 13.9. For some size comparisons, here he is next to the original costume Spider Man. And for fun, here he is next to Venom. So to find a reason to bring that Venom back into a review. He's obviously a little bit smaller than Venom, although he's about the same height. Venom's a lot broader, but he's about the same height, if not the exact same height, as the original costume Spider-Man on the right. Whilst Venom is off polishing his car, let's have a look at the two Spider-Mans side by side. This is the proto-suit. This is the suit that would eventually lead ourselves to the original costume Spider-Man right here. These figures also have something else in common, but besides for the fact that their height is about the same, they also have the same, I would consider it silly gimmick myself. It's that same soft backpack that when you press it, Spider-Man's web shoots out. Sometimes more successful than others. Proto-suit Spider-Man has the exact same thing. Backpack is a little bit more uh, traditional backpack. Same thing works though, you press the button on the back. This is all like a soft, rubbery pillow. And when you press it, Spider-Man's web shoots in and out of his makeshift blaster, his makeshift web shooter, which is much more crude, one could certainly say, than what he would eventually get when he gets the original costume, the real Spider-Man costume. Um, the figures do, like I said, look very similar to one another. I can't help but notice, however, that the original costume, prototype costume, I should say, seems to have a slightly bigger head than this one to the right. Maybe it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. Speaking of eyes, maybe it's the eyes on his goggles that is distorting what I think is a larger head. Now, this would make perfect sense because one is a little bit more loose-fitted versus Spider-Man's more tighter-fitted mask on the top there. Other than that, colors are a little varied from one to the other. The reds here don't seem to share a similar color of red, although the sleeves, I guess, are close enough. The hoodie, however, is drastically, drastically darker, but we'll talk about that in a second. And the blues are, all, of course, a big difference. Big jump as the, the real Spider-Man costume has more of a metallic blue, whereas the prototype costume um, seems to have more of like a, a matte navy or dark blue if you will why don't we go ahead and move that spider-man out of the way because we've already had a look at this now the prototype suit can obviously you can see that it might have bared some inspiration if you will from the spider-man homecoming prototype suit the first costume that spider-man would get before of course tony stark would give him the uh, the spider-man costume we know and love so along with that you get very similar things happening here, like the hood, the more kind of goggles that he's got on his head here. And I guess like the colors are about the same as well. Speaking of colors, I don't know if it's just me. My eyes haven't degraded to the point yet where I can't distinguish between colors, but it does seem as if the red on his sleeves is not quite the same red that's on this part right here. Now he's got straps, that lead to his backpack. Those are also the same color as the top portion of his hoodie here. They almost blend in too close to one another. I wish that this color was a little bit closer to this color. And I certainly wish that this color was a lot closer to this color in the middle there. Uh, speaking of the middle, he does have a raised spider emblem. So that's nice that they simply just didn't slap some paint on the interior of the chest. Goes a little bit to say that they did care enough to sculpt that in. 
Caring, however, seems to stop abruptly when you look at Spider-Man's shoes, as stopping abruptly, the red stops right there. I can't believe, perhaps I'd have to go back and look at the costume in the episode again, I can't believe, though, that the red would just stop like that, where the blue would stick out at the back. I mean, clearly nothing looks like it's been painted on the back of Spider-Man's costume, even though they did technically paint this part, but I guess the plastic could have very well been blue. They just simply painted the hood and the strap of the uh, the backpack or knapsack, if you will. I know I've gotten some flack for saying knapsack. Look it up. It's on Google. Learning is fun. Spider-Man does have a open hand. However, he does have a zero in the way of accessories that will fit into his hand. This hands are also soft rubber. This hand is soft rubber, but you're really not going to do anything with it anyways. But this soft hand, this grip of death, no death will be coming at Spider-Man's hands, doesn't come with, like I said, any, any accessories. I guess you could probably come up with something from your tickle trunk of accessories that you probably have kicking around from other action figures you probably could put in there. Um, it's interesting, though, that they use a very soft plastic for the hand and yet still a dense plastic for the arms. And once again, close-up look at the web shooter. Really wished that they could have added something in the way of paint there. The sculpt, to its credit, looks pretty good, but they don't add any paint whatsoever to it, so it's just this boring black. I guess for the most part, like I said, the colors are pretty good. Colors don't really necessarily match. Arms look drastically different from the torso. Boots just abruptly cut off on paint. But hey now, he does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. That makes up for it, doesn't it? Probably. No, it doesn't. Posability on proto suit Spider-Man. His head rotates all the way around. Hinges up and down. Angles back and forth. Arms rotate all the way around. That's all you're going to get. Nothing in the arms. The hands misleadingly think or convince you that you can rotate them. You're really just turning rubber. And at that point, you're probably going to break it right off. So you don't want to really do that. Legs go back. Legs go back. Legs go forward. Legs go back. That's the correct way that they want to go. And like I said, he's got pickles on the undersides of his feet. Uh, this particular Spider-Man doesn't have any problems really standing. And uh, if you guys, again, are interested in picking this one up for yourself, price point on these will be on average about $10 to $14, depending on where you find it. Yes, it goes without saying that if you've seen Spider-Man Homecoming, you'll probably find a lot of similarities between the costume that Peter originally owns in the film to the one he dons originally in Marvel's Spider-Man the cartoon. This happens a lot of times when a Marvel film first comes to theaters, a cartoon that will follow right afterwards will often adopt the same sort of design elements, so I'm not surprised at all that this Spider-Man proto-suit looks a lot like the Spider-Man proto-suit that he has in Spider-Man Homecoming. I do like the design of this costume, and the figure as a whole looks pretty good. Of course, you've got the same limitations with swiveled legs and swiveled arms, but that goes without saying, of course, these are Gear and Torrance kids. Yes, 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 we've all heard that before. Again, I do like the sculpt. I think where the figure misses its mark is, of course, and overlooking for the fact that he's got limited posability, is more just the coloring matching. Sleeves don't really match the torsos, don't quite match the straps of the knapsack or backpack, if you will. And I can't help but notice that the feet just abruptly stop on red color. What's the deal with that? But still, a nice-looking Spider-Man, um, if you kind of go into this knowing what you're getting, it's a decent-looking figure. And it goes well with the other Spider-Man figures that you may have been collecting with the Marvel Spider-Man line. Today we were having a look, though, at the proto-suit costume Spider-Man from Marvel's Spider-Man cartoon. And again, if you're interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to fairly easily find this guy now on retail store shelves. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? We're going to have some more videos coming your way. Of course, we're going to have some, some more Spider-Man reviews coming your way. So if that is your cup of tea, don't worry. More tea of the spider. That kind of that does sound a little gross. Will be definitely coming your way. And hey, now, while you're at it, why don't you swing by the homepage? Check out the video section and see if there's anything you may have missed along the way. While other people are talking about the bell notification. And I can say that as well. Maybe even say ding-a-ling-a-ling. 100% the best guarantee to make sure that you haven't missed out on anything I've posted up to this point and beyond is to check out the homepage and check out the videos section. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you next time.